Today we're making a tutorial about wind. Let's see how many dad jokes you can spot. The goal of this tutorial is to make this to make this wind-based trap system that lets you push on a block to hide from the wind, but if you are exposed to the wind, it will push you back. And you can hide behind these blocks to get away and make some sort of strategy puzzle for yourself. So let's get into it. Third person template project. We're going to go to content. We're going to go to fab and we're going to look for a fan. Not this ceiling fan here specifically because it comes with a spinning animation just like that. So we don't have to actually do anything, which is good. We're going to create a new folder. Call it fan trap. Open that up. Create a new blueprint. Create a new blueprint actor. Call it BP. Fun. Trap or wind trap or whatever you want to call it. Open that up. Click add. Add a skeletal mesh. Like that. And then we're going to add the fan. So ceiling fan free. Just here. And then where it says animation mode, we're just going to use animation asset and ceiling fan free. Just like that. Now, if we drag that out into the world, you can see there it is. Just like that. And we don't want it to be above like that. So we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees. Rotation minus 90, just like that. And when I add box collision, this will be our trigger box. And we're going to make that wide and relatively large, just like that. bring it down a little bit too. So if we go back into world, we've got this fan, we've got trigger box, you can see that it spins straight away for us, which is what we want. So now we're going to add an event. I'm going to go to our event graph. We're going to right click trigger box, go to add event on component begin overlap. We're going to check if the other actor is equal to our player. So get player character. Go to branch. And if it is, then from other actor, we're going to get component by class. We're going to get the movement component character movement component. I'm going to set walk speed. Set back to walk speed to 250. Just like that. And then we are going to right click on trigger box again and add end overlap. And we're just going to copy all that code over over actor into branch and just change that back to 550. Connect up the get component to over actor and we can test it just like this. So here we are walking. Once this starts pushing his back, it'll look like we're having trouble walking along it. Then once we leave, it goes back to running. Beautiful. Now, if this person is the character, we want to set timer by event we want to make it looping and we want to make it every 0 0.5 seconds that's how often the line trace will trace for our character to be able to push them back we're going to create a custom event from the event pin and check and we're just going to call this wind 
push. From here, we're going to do a spear trace for object. Like so. And we need a start and an end point. So we're going to add an arrow to our trigger box, like so. And move it up and rotate it 90 degrees. Like so. And that will be our start location. Like that. So I'm going to get this arrow. We're going to get world location. And put that into start. And then from the arrow, get forward vector. And see where it's looking. Get a times node. And then from world location, get a plus node. And add that to our times node. I put that into end. Come back to this times node. Right click on the bottom pin. Convert to a float. And we're just going to promote that to a variable. And we're going to call that line extent. And we're going to come over to the details panel, make sure that that's instance editor and exposed on spawn. So that'll dictate how far our arrow trace extends in the world. And we're going to check for, so we're going to, first off, we're going to set our radius. So set it to 20. And we're going to drag from object types, type make an array. We're going to add a couple of pins here. So we're going to check for world static, world dynamic, and pawn. And last one of physics body. Okay, so it's going, to, it's going to block each of these. That's what we're checking for. So if it hits a wall, it's going to stop. If it hits a physics body, it's going to stop. And that will allow you to push a block without being affected by the wind. So from return value, we're going to get a branch. So pull off, press B, get a branch. From out hit, we're just going to break hit results. And then from hit results, we're going to check if it's equal to play a character again. We're just going to put an and boolean here. So if it hits something and is equal to play a character, then we do something. And that thing that we do is we get hit actor, we get component by class again, which is the movement component the character movement component and then we add impulse and the impulse we add is the arrow we get its forward vector and then we times by convert that to a float 75 and plug that into impulse and check velocity change. We're going to set the line extent to 500 as our default value. So select line extent, come to default value, type in 500. And then in the viewport, these arrows, just make sure that they're low enough to hit your character. And this timer by event, you can set that to add an impulse. Every time it fires, if it hits your character, it's going to add an impulse. So 0 0.03 is quite a steady rate. And then 75 pushes back and doesn't let you go any further but you need to play with these values a little bit so next thing to do would be duplicate these and move them to the left and to the right and then we'll call this one left and this one middle and this one and then we want just here where we're getting the world location. We want to do a for each loop from our wind push event. We want to make an array. And then we're going to feed in our three arrows left, middle, and right. And then from get world location, we're going to get select just like that and put in the index from our for each loop. 
connect the select to both get forward vector and get world vector and then feed in left middle and right again if that happens then just connect array back into it until it turns blue and that's fine so what this is doing is it's running a line trace on left middle and right each time so you can hide behind a block or move a block like that so it allows you to actually make headway so if i very quickly knock together a bit of a a thing and i can show you if i run into this one now i'll get pushed back but as soon as i'm over here i don't if i get over this one let's see i'm moving forward ever so slightly it's not going to hit me when i'm behind here okay so as we can see this one's not going to hit and because we've made our line extents a variable then we can make this a thousand we can change the trigger box to be bigger like this and i can move all of these around as well so we can have a much different trap that we want So if I do this, play from here, see, I get pushed back here, jump in here, no more pushback, push back to this wall, across here, start getting pushed back over here. And you can play with the value to sort of make it as violent or as good as you want it really. So if I up the speed, we go for zero point zero two then we'll get a whole different effect it pushes this back like that still blocked here until i step into it and then i get pushed back and into a bleed or we can mess with the pushback rate here i'll put this at a thousand and put this at one second for instance then we'll have a much more aggressive burst push each time so as you can see there every time it triggers on one it pushes it back by quite a distance just like that now you can do all sorts of this. We can add some Niagara effect particle systems here and trigger them when a push is going to happen. Uh, we can add some sounds, audio, just here, and we can play wind start a wind 06 make sure to turn off auto activate get the audio play here and then in end you want to get the audio and stop or stop delayed whichever uh, and then the other thing that we do need to do is stop the loop when we exit. So if we promote this return value to a variable, and then from here, call clear and invalidate timer, and that stops the line trace running and should save you some performance on your computer. So we'll give that a go, click play. We enter, you can hear the sound is going. We're getting pushed back, getting pushed back. We leave, sound stops, line traces also stop. And that's that. I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much.